In this video, we're going to continue on a series of videos we've been producing on home networking. We're going to look at Crabtree's Instinct range. Within that range, they do the Euro module, one that we've used here for the RJ45s, for a HDMI lead here, and a coax point here. For this video, we're going to be concentrating on the Keystone range. This range comes in one gang, two gang, three and four, and allows you to fit male and female TV coax, F-Type satellite TV, phone both master and secondary, RJ45 for cables 5E, 6, 6A and 7, as well as RJ11, HDMI and USB type A, 2 and 3. So let's first of all look at one of the benefits of using the Keystone range from Instinct to the end user before we go on and see how it can benefit the electrician. So let's take our patch lead and plug it into our Euro module first. So that one goes in there and then into our Keystone range here. And we're going to look at how far from the surface we are to the cable when it has a smooth bend on it. Take my rule, put a nice smooth bend in there, and I am from the wall six centimeters to the actual cable itself. Now on the Keystone range with a nice smooth bend in it, I am three centimeters away. So therefore, whatever goes in front of this can be pushed considerably closer to the wall. This is even more so when we look at the HDMI lead next. So let's take one of these into the Euro module first, like so, and then into our Keystone range. Already you can probably see how much further out this one is than this. So let's measure it. Again, I'll put a nice smooth bend on it, like so. And we measure that one from the surface out, being generous, nine centimeters from that surface. A nice smooth bend in this one and we're at five and a half centimeters so therefore we can see again you can get considerably closer to the wall by using the keystone range and that will be a benefit to the customer i'm just going to show you a nice feature that we found when we opened up the rj45 for the cat6 cable it's got this little plate on here that works in two ways it works as a grip for them in other words no tie wrap needed you push this into position it holds the conductors in but it also works as the tool for the insulation displacement, meaning that we don't need the traditional punch down tool that we've seen so many times in the back of these style of connectors. So we don't need this. So I'll attempt to show you how to do this. So let's take a piece of Cat6 cable and we'll make an end off. So strip it back to start with as always and we'll untwist all our conductors, get rid of the string, we'll untwist those conductors. And what it's all about is just laying them into the right position. So exactly the same as always, where we're obviously going to untwist them and straighten them out. But then it's a case of laying them in the right order and then just pushing back this plate here in order to make the connections. So untwist all of these. They're all untwisted. Let's remove the center piece of plastic. Fall down out of the way, give it a little tug. Okay, so now let's open up a packet and look at the bits that we get inside. So there's the RJ45 and the end that our conductors are going to go into. And then this piece here, the grooves in it works as our insulation displacement, but then a clamp afterwards, really clever. It's going to take a few moments to lay these out into the right position. We're using the B method of connection. So if I turn it around like that, I've got um, white and orange followed by orange. So I can lay my first two out, so I know I've got in there, and I'm gonna go white and orange followed by orange. So I've got those two approximately into position. And then my next two down are white and brown and brown. So I'll take my white and brown, lay that under the orange one, followed by my brown. So I take that one, I'm just gonna kick that down there, followed by brown. And then on the other side, I go white and blue. White and blue followed by blue. So it's worth just taking a few moments just to lay them out as best you can before putting them in. So we go white and blue, blue, followed by white and green, and then finally green. So take this one down here. So we're trying to lay those out as best we can. So we've got them sprayed out. We can offer them into position, like so. And maybe this is the time where you just give them a little tug into position. So maybe just lay them on top of the actual 
displacement connection in the right position. And again, it just takes a few few moments to, to lay them out. And obviously once you've laid them out, perhaps give them a little tug down. So just to hold them. That's one side done. And then lay the other side out in position. And once you've got them in position, just have a little check that none of them have come stray. That one there is just probably just trying to find its way out. Take our little clamp, push it onto like so, push it down. And there we have it. We've made those connections off. So just get that firm push down, look around it, you can see obviously connected and connected. This is not a cord grip here or here, okay, so it's been held on by the actual clamp itself. Just trim these off. And by doing that, maybe a little bit more on that one, yeah, by doing that, that has done the insulation displacement for us by pushing that down into position, meaning that we're fully connected up there. So I think when you get used to this style of connection, um, that can make electricians a lot easier, just laying those in and then just pushing them firmly together. You have to give it a really good squeeze in order to make a nice connection, but again, once you get used to it, we've got here a satellite connection, which obviously clips in like so, nice and straightforward, but has a retaining clip. So you need to push that in as well in order to hold it firmly into position. And another tip with these is you're gonna need a box that's at least 32 mil deep. So fine in a dry line box, not a problem at all. If you're gonna chase one into a wall, just be careful, 28 mil aren't quite uh, deep enough. So if you're gonna chase a box into the wall, to use a slightly deeper box in order to make the connection to this style. So I think we're seeing now how the Crabtree Instinct range and these keystone plates can be a real benefit to a home networking system. Imagine you had a four gam plate, you could have a HDMI lead, CAT6, telephone and a coax point all within them. And we know the angle created from them means that furnish can be pushed a lot closer to the wall. We also saw how we didn't need a tool in order to make off our CAT6 cable in the back of our RJ45 and the actual pressing down or crimping of it also worked as a cord grip. And I think when you master that, that can make electrician's life easier. And you know we like that at eFix. However, if you've got any comments on home networking systems, please make sure you leave them below and we'll try and get back to as many as we can.